All right, so here is an animation that I'm going to use as an example to export. So we got to go to the export settings. I follow my mouse here. Here's the render settings. I'm set it to Maya software. And I'm going to change the image format. You can use JPEG just because the file size is smaller, but ideally you want to use TIFF because it's uncompressed. As you can see here, it's grayed out compression. Frame padding. Uh, set this to four, depending on how many frames you're going to have, will also determine how much extra frame padding, as you can see right here, from three, now I type in four, you'll see an extra number there, and that's what that frame padding means. Name number extension is really important, rather than name extension and number, uh, extension referring to the file name, um, image format. The frame range is here as well, so you have to figure out, and in my example, I have 109 frames, and so if the render crashes, you can continue from where it crashed or last frame, uh, so that's really useful. Uh, this is why we want to render in, in frames. We want to uh, be able to um, still keep some of the renders that we've done instead of the previous way, of which is pr producing one entire video clip. Renderable camera, right now I don't have anything, but you should ideally have a camera one or whatever you named it. Presets, HD 1080. Uh, otherwise, if you're running out of time, you use HD 540, which is a quarter of the size and should, should be four times faster than HD 1080. From here, this looks good. Also, think about where the file is going to be saved to. For me, the path is my C drive. You can set the project, and this way you can set where exactly you want it. Otherwise, it will default to wherever Maya has. In my software, okay, if you have it at preview quality, then again, it's going to be faster to render. The production quality, I would say at least twice as fast if you're going to preview quality. Uh, but ideally, you want production quality. If you're running out of time, again, that's something you need to think about. Uh, some other stuff in here, ray tracing, you want to turn that off. If you do turn it on, it's going to take longer, but it will look better. Uh, motion blur, if you are wanting to do that, you can use 2D motion blur. Uh, again, it's going to be slower. Otherwise, keep that off. Uh, from there, you can hit close, and then on the top here, you will go to rendering and then you will uh, batch render. Uh, other thing you can do is you could uh, easily not use uh, not use um, Maya to render. We can go in and uh, do uh, a different method. And uh, let's see where that's at. So here I have my folder. It's in an animation folder. I can right click on any one of these Maya files and you should see this render. When I do that and click it, DOS will load up and this will be a lot faster than rendering it within Maya. So within Maya, you can go to this render here and then go to batch render. Uh, but to save yourself the, the hassle, you can, like right there, batch render, uh, you can uh, go in and, and use the uh, DOS, um, DOS renderer. See where, see what happened with that. It's, Uh, so again, and to review, uh, we went into the common tab, changed the import image format to TIFF, so it has an individual TIFF sequence. Uh, we have a frame range of the number of frames we want, and we select our renderable camera and determine our image size, go to Maya software, and change the quality as needed. Once you're happy with that, again, you can use the first option, which is slower, which is the batch render in Maya, or you can right-click in the Windows Explorer over the file and then choose render.